Here is a little sweet reminder. There is not enough motivation in the world to make a stubborn mind do something it doesn't want to do. And even if you succeed, that stubborn mind will remember it, will not easily forgive you. And next time around, you'd like to repeat the exact same behavior, it's gonna make your life much harder. And a lot can be said on the topic of befriending your brain. But in this video, I'm gonna focus on examples that will mostly relate to people who have ADHD. And even then, ADHD looks different in different people. So my main message in this video is, understand and go through the process of befriending your brain and use my examples as an inspiration to build your own win-win compromises with your own Mr. Brain. If you want to befriend your brain, you first need to know it a little bit better. So spend some time to reflect on those four things. What kind of environment helps you work most efficiently? What brings peace to your mind? And I know this can be a difficult question, especially for people with hyperactive type of ADHD. So I'm going to give you examples to help you think of something relatable to you. What's the real goal behind the behavior you would like to execute? Going to the gym is not a goal. That's an execution of a goal. Why do you want to go to the gym? We're going to talk about this in a few minutes. How can you satisfy your need for change and stimulation in a healthy way? And this question is important because people with ADHD oftentimes have the need for change to give them adrenaline, dopamine hit. And by the way, I'm Evie. I have psychology background. I have coaching experience since I could not imagine myself being a therapist. I'm diagnosed with ADHD and I truly like helping people. So all those are the reasons why this video exists and you can subscribe if you want to see similar content more often. My brain likes rituals, which is not the same as routines. A routine would be if I wash my dishes every single night, which is not at all the case. I either wash every single fork immediately or let the dishes pile up and towards the end of the week, I become very creative how to eat as I don't actually own so many dishes. So I have no routine, but whenever I get into washing dishes mode, there is a ritual, which is probably a bit of an autistic tendency in my behavior, but hey, it helps my brain, it doesn't hurt me, that's all that matters. First, all dishes need to go to the left, then there's soap one by one and move to the right, where later on, we'll rinse them off and put them again to the right. So we're going left to right, which is very logical. And while we're soaping, even more soap falls on top of the soap dishes and same while we're rinsing them off. More water goes on top of what needs to be rinsed off anyway. It's probably a bit crazy, but there are two reasons stay home messages why I'm sharing this with you. First, if you have some rituals and if they are not anyhow hurting you, just let it be. If it gives you peace, satisfaction, relief, let it be. B. The ADHD brain is oftentimes overwhelmed by thoughts and ideas. So if anything gives some structure to the chaos without hurting you, allow it. It actually helps you. We don't have to have flexible mindset about every single thing in our day. It is okay every now and then to have a few rituals that make you and your brain satisfied. Second, you can use existing rituals to incorporate Incorporate something healthy for yourself. For example, at the end of the day, I like to get comfy on the couch with a glass of wine, light up some candles, move this big ass lamp next to me because it has different colors and have some me time. I don't talk to people. I don't text anybody, no emails, just me and whatever interest I have at a time. I do it for 40, 60 minutes and I go to bed. Simple yet efficient. My brain enjoys it. So after that, it is more motivated to go to bed and do 10-15 minutes meditation, which in return helps me sleep. It is a very good friendship in that moment. All right, sweet ritual, but there is one ingredient that didn't necessarily help me the wine. I don't have any temptation for alcohol because I grew up around an alcoholic, so I have seen the ugly part of this. And although I can drink, I don't hate it, I really don't have the 
lust for it. Nevertheless, I have it, it's a habit. But then I realized that the glass of wine is a trigger for my brain. The moment I do it, I'm thinking, okay, we are done with the responsibilities for the day. It is me time, it's rest time. And because of that association, I enjoy the wine. So I'm like, hmm, you know what? I don't gain anything from the wine. I gain from the cue. So if I replace wine with Tea. And I'm not saying everybody can just do that swap. For me, it was easy because I didn't care for the actual substance. I care for the ritual. So I kept it and I give it to my brain as a reward. But by removing just one ingredient from wine to tea, now I am losing nothing, but I'm gaining something. I don't know if tea helps me necessarily, but for sure, removing alcohol from my daily consumption somehow helps me. So Think about this. That's my message to you. Look at your rituals. It is likely that your brain likes to have some rituals. And think about it. Is there just one ingredient that you can replace with something else? And it doesn't necessarily need to be something more healthy and beneficial for you. You don't have to go a step further, but you can just remove something that hurts you. Remove something that goes against your goals. Remove something that is not friendly for you. Keep the brain happy and also make it beneficial for you. Too often we try to start doing something because it seems good or healthy. And doing the something becomes the goal, like I previously told you with the gym. Going to the gym becomes the goal and you try to force yourself to go three, four times a week. And I'm sure that you give up shortly after because your ADHD brain is not gonna do something just because it's healthy. It needs to have a very good, interesting, challenging, novel, stubborn reason behind. So take a step back and think why you want to do something. And then the habit that you want to execute will support that why. A goal that you will stick with is all about your priorities, your values, interests, just the big why behind the behavior. Me going to the gym is expression of my goal to leave the house more often and to be a bit more active because honestly, I just sit on my butt most of the time. And because I don't care to have a perfect body to be very honest i don't really work out that much when i go to the gym often i go there and i just sit on the stationary bike for like 40 minutes i put some high kind of high level intensity just to make me feel like i'm doing something but i'm not paddling all that fast and honestly i'm just watching youtube or netflix on my phone and i get tempted sometimes to bitch at myself for being too lazy to do the actual thing but then i remind myself why i'm actually going to the gym my actual goal and this reminder helps me go there three to four times a week on most weeks, which is so much more than what I would have done if I'm just blindfully trying to force myself to work out. So moral of the story, at the end of the day, my brain is happy because it's entertained. It gets to have guilt-free TV time and I'm happy because I'm more active and I'm feeling better about myself at the end of the day. If you have ADHD, then talking about befriending your brain cannot go without talking about entertainment. You probably cannot stay still and just do nothing. And also, it is a wishful thinking, let's be honest, that you would have the focus and the attention to, let's say, read every time you have to sit and wait for something. I love to read and to learn new things. I'm a curious person, but it doesn't come easy to me. And sometimes I have the internal motivation, but my brain is just unable to can. So I accept the reality and I work with it. Normally, if I have to wait for something, I get on my phone. If I travel somewhere, again, I get on my phone. I don't actually enjoy this behavior, but my brain is too restless and it feels too uncomfortable just sitting and waiting and doing nothing. Honestly, it exhausts my already limited patience. So here are two ideas. First, I have stopped my mobile data for Instagram so that I limit my mindless scrolling time. But then I ended up browsing on Amazon and buying way more stuff than I needed. So, okay, on one side, my brain needs needs entertainment, but I want to satisfy this need in a less harmful way than 
endless scrolling on Instagram or spending money. So I decided to limit my Netflix time only to the app on my phone. So when I'm home, I download stuff and I watch them when I'm outside, either stuck waiting for appointment in traffic or whatever opportunity I have, which I usually invest into something that I don't want to do, but I kind of want to do. Basically, the times when my brain needs to be entertained, I give it to it, guilt-free. So by this simple approach, I gain three things. My brain is entertained. I don't feel like I'm brainwashed by social media or spending way too much money. And three, because I actually enjoy watching stuff, although I do not have the attention span for a movie usually, but I get to finally decrease my endless watch list by doing this little change of behavior. So it's a really good friendship moment between me and my brain. Try it out. Another typical desire of an ADHD brain is to have change. Predictable, because otherwise it's too overwhelming, but nevertheless, change. And to be honest, the topic of how environment affects people with ADHD is huge. But for the sake of this video and trying to keep it under one hour, a way to befriend your brain is by changing your environment, by simply moving the furniture around, especially in the area where you're working, where you need to be more focused. Just look around in your environment. Can you change something? Can you make it more stimulating for yourself? Every three, four months, I move the furniture around and change the layout of the living room where I spend most of my time when I'm at home. And I have a lot of plans. And by the way, there is research showing that just looking at plans makes you feel better. So go get some plans. And I usually also have a lot of stuff on the walls, but we're gonna talk about reminders in another video. And I like to keep it colorful and stimulating. And also research shows that people with ADHD perform much better even than neurotypical people in more stimulating environments. So basically, befriending your brain means accepting how it functions and learning how to work with it together for the sake of the brain and your own well-being. And just try to implement those healthy compromises whenever possible. Perfection, that's not possible, that's not the goal. You are a human being that every now and then will wake up in a bad mood with low dopamine and it will get some snack and that's totally okay. Couch potato days are not the evil. The evil is when you convince yourself that there is nothing you can do, you're helpless and you're doomed to fail no matter what. That's what we're trying to avoid here. And if you're just a human being with ADHD who is trying to cultivate some self-care that will then allow you to enjoy your life a little bit more, then begin by befriending your brain one compromise at a time. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.